Alright, so let's continue with this. This is the 21st Torah portion for 2012 called uh, Ki Tissa. Ki Tissa. Um, in, the, in the Hebrew. And it means when thou take. Because the sum, the, the, the sum, we can call it the divine senses. Not so much to name how many ones there were for any kind of bragging rights. But the number of those were taken. You understand? And the number of those were taken, this is in a section about who shall worship. And the key verse, we see it before us, verse 11 and verse 12, mainly verse 12. When thou takest the sum. When thou do, do what? When thou takest the sum. Ante ye Israelin lejoja guter tekeble. Now, that word tekeble. That's the key word there, tekeble, right? That means when you receive or when you kabbalah. This is the key. This is the key word. This is the key word, tekeble. Now, this is what was spoken to Moses. Yahweh spake to Moses, saying, "When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel." Now, as we began off in the first part of this, the previous part of it, which was the first part of this, um. And we had a we had an intro where we just touched on some of the bling bling leading up to the main the main part of this is about the worship of the golden calf that after all the Beit Israel had been through much like all the lost sheep black folks in the Americas and the Caribbean have been through that they would turn around in a sense and be in a sense more spiritually Egyptian than the Egyptians were. You understand? And would be more Babylonian than the Babylonians were. You understand? So here, at this particular point, before we get to that point, we have the tabernacle being mentioned, the altar of, of incense. And it's important that we distinguish this altar of incense. We're not talking about really frankincense in that sense, but there's an altar of incense. Because we go to the, to the note coming up, it speaks it speaks to us about frankincense is not to be confounded with incense or ishens to which it was to be added as it is often used apart from incense in other words many people think when it says incense in the scripture and the altar of incense it was actually speaking about frankincense but here the Schofield gives us a very good um a very good note and reference that it's not speaking it's not speaking of frankincense and we find that towards the end of chapter 30 30 uh, verse 34 to verse 38 now this is all dealing with selot you understand not just not just um 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 praise or or intercession but the whole the whole worship aspect. Now, many churches, we call them illegal Jehovah worships, many churches talk about prayer and worship. You understand? They talk about praise, actually praise and worship music. Now, one thing you will notice, there's no kind of music in the sense of instrumental music in that sense. You see, there's chants, there's praises, and it's just like Ayabingi or the, with the voice. It's just like the Ethiopian chanting. And even some of the Gregorian chanting of, of the early church is, is more what Yahweh means by praise. It's with the voice. The voice becomes the instrument. You see, so what we have now in this modern um, um, Babylonian society, what we have now is the bastardization of the church you will saying that the things of the world are creeping into the church. So when we talk about this is 40 years later and what's happened, the bling bling is the golden calf. When you see it within the fullness, you can see how the experience of the Beit Israel, nearly, what, 4,000 years ago, is much like the experience of the lost sheep 40 years later after the so-called 60s, which was the dawning of the age of peace. All right. Now the tabernacle is mentioned, the altar of incense, the great worship chapter. This is so we touched on the shekel, how the shekel 
the taking the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom, a ransom or an atonement. Now, this is the atonement money. So we have here the imperial money of the king of kings, which is the Bur. And it's very interesting that Ethiopia's economy is a biblical economy. It's based on the, the, the silver or the shekel, the Bur. And here you have a shekel from the, what they call the Hasmonean shekel, where you have it on the left. And now we have the Ethiopic shekel, you understand, or the Ethiopian shekel, you understand, on the right. Now, the point of this, as we mentioned, is not about money or it's not even called tithes. It's not, it's an offering, but it's an offering that Moses our black lawgiver, you know, was then delivering the black Hebrews, the black Jews, we can say the Ayuds or the Ayhud, out of black Egypt. See, this is a black-on-black -black thing. This shows that you may be my color, but you're not my kind, because the Egyptians were our color, you know what I'm saying, of this particular time. But they, they were in a different sort of worship. Like, there's a lot of niggas out there who are our color, but they're in a different sort of worship. They're worshiping the golden calf. They're worshiping the bling bling. So they may come out with the people, but you will know them, you understand, by their fruits. You understand, you would judge them and know them by their fruits. But here, it's very important for us to understand that the key of this verse, verse 12, it says that they shall give every man a ransom for his soul to Yahweh, to Jah, when thou numberest them that there be no plague among them, that there be no tripping up amongst them when thou numberest them. Now, as we go forward, it tells us very clearly that the rich shall not give more and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel. In a sense, what you see right here, if we say a shekel is a, is, is a, is a bur, the bur, the shekel, and that will be equal to a $1 silver. You understand? Just let, let, let's take that as an example. That means 50 cents. You understand? Or half of that. Now, we could get into the weights and measures, and we got some chapters here that deals with the Ethiopia Burr and the Bible Code. It's a very interesting document, and we'd like to get into much, um, much more of this. This is a brief Ethiopian history right here. Ethiopia can boast the oldest civilization in Africa and the oldest independent nation should we say, a, a Hebraic, a Hebrew nation. It has been in existence for, they say here, about 2,000 years, but actually it's more over 3,000 years. Minulik I, Kedamawi Minulik, one of the sons or the firstborn son of King Solomon, is known to have an oxum, you understand, been in Aksum in about, some say, 7 A.D., but actually it's much earlier. But we're just reading this. This is, this is one um, Gentile overview and perspective. We have to weed through it and vet it out. But he established a, a dynasty which had, apart from a brief period of rule by Italy, from 1936 to 41, it ruled Ethiopia, or Abyssinia was previously called by the, the outsiders, called it Abyssinia. And Ethiopians who lost the true knowledge of themselves still call themselves Abyssinians, as it was previously called by the Gentiles until 1974, when it said that his imperial majesty was overthrown by a so-called military committee, which he actually established and actually gave instructions to. But that's a part of it that the Gentiles and the Lunar Nutties don't want you to know because their, their conspiracy backfired. That's why there's so much confusion and craziness there because it did not work out exactly as they planned. You know, is that they plan to plan and Ja plan to plan and Ja is the best of planners. But Aksum or Aksum is one of the oldest and the world's first Christian state. We would say really Hebrew, Judeo Christian state. Under Minulik II or Dagmawi Minulik, who reigned from 1889 to 1913, Ethiopia emerged from this medieval so-called existence into a modern state. 
Now, in 1991, Ethiopia became a federated state known as the Federal Republic of Ethiopia. In 1993, Eritrea, it occupying the northern coastal strip, it broke away and was formally recognized by a peace treaty on December 12, 2000. The capital of Ethiopia is Addis Ababa. Now, that's just some, some background history right there. Now, the Ethiopia, uh, we have gold coins, silver coins. Here we have gold coins of the kingdom of Abyssinia, they say, are denominated as work, right? And the silver are known as bur, as bur. The basic currency is the biblical bur. You understand? Bur. Bur. Now, those of the empire of Ethiopia, you understand? Um, all right. Okay. So here the uh, uh, bur. You understand? The book? Okay. 